Mike again. And what we have here, we have a model of what I call the big house, Casa Grande, Hearst Castle. And it's not just any type of model. This was made by a good friend of mine. His name is Deroy Jensen. And it took him over a year to make this. But what's really neat about this, it's hard to visualize how big Casa Grande really is. Let's, uh, we're gonna pan up. We can see the two bell towers between the Italian cypress pine trees. Uh, we know that there's more than two bell towers. Hearst Castle is huge, and that's why Mike is showing us this model today. So we can get a, a full scope of the size of this house. Let's, let's go on in a little bit. So speaking of size, Mike, what do you have to say about the scale? The scale of this, the big house is 68,500 square feet. To put that in perspective, my house, is about 1,400 square feet. So 49 of my homes would fit in this right here. Wait, hold on. You could fit 49 of your homes right here in Casa Grande, the big house, which is what we call Hearst Castle today. Right. Wow, so okay. It's big, it's enormous. And it's hard to visualize something like that when you have the designer talking about how big this is gonna be. And you really have no concept of how big it really will be. So sometimes people will make models or blueprints to help you visualize this. And so this particular model is a scale model. And what, what I mean by that is if you look closely here, the scale is 1 16th of an inch equals one foot. So if we do the math with that, we know there's 16 sixteenths in an inch. So one inch will equal 16 feet of this model. So I happen to have a tape measure with me. And if we just go one inch right here on the front, that is 16 feet from here. Let's see. To here. And I'll let's my... bring that up to let's say the fourth floor. Let's we have go a better angle. Yeah. yeah. Let's okay. So you kind of get an idea how big that is. And can you turn the numbers towards us? You got it. Yeah, great. There we go. So one inch equals 16 feet. That's correct. Okay. So wow, if that if we're looking at the bell tower and it looks to be about two inches wide on the model, that means 32 feet wide in real life. That is correct. Wow, that's a big, so that's it's a big, a big bell castle. tower. It's a big house. And how many bells are in that one tower? Each one of the towers has 18 bells and they ring every day. If you've ever been here, they ring every day at 12 noon. The heaviest bell weighs 1,600 pounds. Wow, let's, so let's shoot up there. Now, you said if you've ever been here, you would have heard the bells ring at noon. Now, Mike, we sure miss our visitors. We are still closed to the public. So these Castle Kids virtual ranger programs are your, are your way to get your live uh, peak at Hearst Castle. And we're gonna be going in there today uh, quite shortly, actually. But um, we won't be able to see everything. There's too many rooms. We won't have time for it all. So. Uh, we're going to use the model to see a little bit more, and let's start with the, the the lowest floor, which is actually the basement. Now, how do we see the model on the basement? Well, this is kind of neat because... Or the basement on the model. The there we go. The there you go. What's really neat about the model, you see how big this is when we use the tape measure, so you have to have a very strong foundation in order for, for this to stand. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lift this model up and we're gonna show you what the basement and the foundation looks like. Whoa, where's that model going? Wow, this is spectacular because visitors and even a lot of employees are not allowed in the basement. That is a restricted off limit area. Uh, this is a great way to see this. Now, 
Now, Mike, I'm from the Midwest. We have basements. Every house does. That's where we go for tornadoes. You know that uh, we're dealing with lots of natural disasters, even on this very day yes, in are. California and across the United States. We're hoping everyone stays safe. Um, what are what is some of the purposes of this basement that was built for Hearst Castle? The basement is kind of fun. If you look at it, you look at each one of these sections here, and this is the one, there's two things, two major disasters that California usually is involved in. Like you said, one's going on right now and that's fire. One is fires. going on right, yeah, fire. And the other one is earthquakes. And we'll talk about that later. But the basement has different sections. And you can see how these sections, there's walls in between. So if you have a fire, let's say you have a fire right here, it's going to stay right there. It won't go anywhere else because it's all, it's all, uh, uh, sectioned off. off. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So the basement, 14,000 square feet of basement space sectioned off into individual rooms to prevent the spread of fire. That's, That's correct. Pretty amazing. And then this basement also creates a strong foundation for the house right. as well. Just like you need a foundation if you're doing sports, buildings need a good foundation in order to stand. For strength, That's actually. Exactly. Yeah. Strength and durability. So this is the basement area. There's, as we can see, three sections. One, two, three. And you, should we take the rest of the model and put it back on? Let's do it. Okay. So you need that strong foundation for the other natural disaster that uh, California experiences, and that is earthquakes. So if we are dealing with earthquakes here in California, Mike, what is the house made out of to help protect the structure when the earth shakes? The house is made of concrete, but what they've also done is they've used steel reinforcement as well. So you have steel reinforced concrete for strength and durability, and it's, it's very good for withstanding earthquakes. And they're well aware of an earthquake that happened over a hundred years ago in San Francisco. So they really had that in the back of their mind when they were building this particular building structure almost a hundred years ago. So as we see the house above your head, we could see Hearst Castle up there. We're also checking out this model. The house is made out of concrete. And within the walls and the floors of the house, there are steel bars, which are called rebar or steel reinforcements. And that will help the house to be both stable and flexible to move with the earth if it shakes and not to crumble. Uh, so let's see here, the, the whole house is quite sturdy. There's been earthquakes here, even in uh, 2000 and, and 2003, 2003, 6.5 yep. magnitude. And, we're, we're checking out the house here, the model and the house, everything was fine. Um, let's see what the different sections of the house are. I'm gonna come this way. We got a little bit of a glare from the sun. So we can see the front of the house, the two bell towers, we see a portion that extends back. But then what are these wings on either side, Mike? Uh, what, what's going on over here? Well, this is, this is my favorite wing. This is the north wing. It's called the recreation wing of the house. And you have a lot of fun things that you could do on this side. You have a movie theater down here. A movie theater, yeah. wow. Yeah. Now, Mr. Hurst, uh, he did, he was a Hollywood movie maker. He so was, of course he he's was. gonna wanna watch movies. Exactly. So you have a movie theater on this side. Right over here, you have a game room. You could play pool or listen to the radio or something like that. Over on this side, he even has a hair salon and a dentist office. Dentist not so fun, but uh, but it's still on this side. So we have a billiard room, a game right room. Yep. Let's see, we have a movie theater. Right over here. Uh, there's a dentist and a hair salon within the north wing. And yep. there's uh, several bedrooms, bathrooms, sitting rooms, just in the north wing. It's four floors tall. Yep. There's a total of 30 rooms just on this side. And Hearst Castle took 28 years to build. They never finished. And they pretty much worked on the North Wing throughout each decade, the 1920s, the 30s, they, the 40s. They built, they expanded, they renovated. That's correct. As a matter of fact, this top floor 
was the last floor that they worked on. Uh, and that they worked on that up until 1948. Are you going to show us the top? Do you want to take the roof off? Let's take the roof. Let's raise the roof, Let's Mike. raise the roof. Let's go to the third All right. Floor. We'll just have you step back. Let's see if we can get a little perfect. Yeah. We got a little more sun. That's great. Look at that. Wow. Hearst Castle is extraordinary. It is really the big house. So I'm going to go check out if there's a north wing. Sure, there's got to be a south wing, right? Let's get a good picture on here. All right, the south wing of Hearst Castle. Oh, that's it's a bright sun today. There we go. So through this door is the kitchen. And then the upper floors of the south wing are staff accommodation, actually. So lots of staff, maybe up to 30 household staff to um, manage a house of this size. And uh, we've got the main part now. So we saw the north wing, the south wing a little bit, and we have the main part. Now the first floor, uh, Mike is gonna tell us about. So let's set it up. Go ahead, Mike. Well, the first floor down here, there's socializing room. So what you would do as a guest when you came up, you would maybe meet Mr. Hurst down the bottom floor, and then you might have dinner, and then you'd go to a movie. So All there's right. a living room, basically through the front door. That's there's right, right a there. dining room beyond. Let's see, this is, yeah, we're gonna set it up right here. Main floor here with the assembly room, which is the living room. We have the dining room, it's really long. We can see the, the windows right next to each other, uh, extending back. There, there you go, you can see them. Wow. That's fans fascinating, fascinating stuff. Yeah. So that room right here, there's the dining room refectory nice and long. So yes, the social rooms were probably quite busy. Lots of chitter chatter, conversation, people moving about. Mr. Hurst was well known, a famous Californian. So of course he's gonna invite a lot of uh, different people up here to stay in his house. But what if you wanted a bit of a quiet space. I wonder. I know where I would go. Yeah, let's let's get in there. Where would you go to your quiet space? I would go to the library. Well, I think the library is a nice quiet spot. You could relax here in Mr. Hearst's library here in Casa Grande. We're on the second floor of the house. I'm another guide here at Hearst Castle. My name is Andrew. And I'm just kind of hanging out in the house today. We're gonna be uh, jumping around showing you all kinds of cool stuff. But here in the library is where William Randolph Hearst would show off 4,000 books to his friends here in the library. Well, maybe you have a library at home, but uh, 4,000 books, that's a lot. Mr. Hearst was a collector and he collected everything, including books. In fact, uh, some of the earliest books he collected were comic books. Maybe you guys at home have a nice comic book collection. So yeah, you and uh, Mr. Hurst would be able to compare uh, comics, see which ones were more valuable. Another thing that Mr. Hurst was collecting, ancient Greek vases. And these are really, really old. Some of them, uh, well, they're over 2000 years old. You see this little vase right here above my shoulder. That's the oldest vase in the house. It's about 2,700 years old. Yeah, so that's like the earliest example of Greek pottery right there. Now, the Greeks had vases. They also had drinking vessels, little cups and these cups are pretty cool. They're called Rytons. Let's get a closer look at them because they're very unique. They're very interesting. What is the first thing you notice about these ancient Greek drinking vessels? Well, if we get a closer look, you're going to see that they are shaped like animals. Pretty cool. Let's see. The one on the right looks like a bull. 
the one in the middle here looks like a wild boar. And then this guy looks like a horse. Now keep in mind, you would be drinking out of these little vessels at parties, okay? So the Greeks, they knew how to host a party. And maybe you've been to like a birthday party before or a sleepover. And what do you drink out of? Like one of those red party cups? Well, you can think of these ritons as kind of like the ancient Greek version of a red party cup, right? Now, another interesting thing you notice about these vessels, um, they wouldn't rest very well on a table uh, if you had like your Kool-Aid, your punch inside of there, because what would happen? It would fall out, right? So you have to hold it in your hand. You have to drink the drink. And then when your drink is gone, you could flip the vessel upside down and put it on the table. That's how you know you're ready for another drink, right? Maybe some more Kool-Aid. But uh, when we look around the library, take a moment to appreciate these ancient Greek vases. Mike and Tracy mentioned earthquakes, okay? So what do you guys think when you put a vase that's over 2000 years old on the top of a bookshelf, well, that's not very earthquake safe, is it? And when they had an earthquake here in 2003, this Roman pot here on the table, this Roman vase, it fell down. It's about 2000 years old, but it rolled off the table and that was one of the only things that got damaged up here during that big 6.5 earthquake in 03. So we had to uh, restore the pottery. And when they put it back down on the table, they're going to use a very special, well, substance to make sure that the pots and vases don't fall during an earthquake. It's something called museum putty. I have some right here, it's pretty cool. It's almost like silly putty, check this stuff out. Okay, you could buy this at the store and you could use it for your vases at home. You just take it off, you put it on the bottom of one of these pots and then you could firmly fasten it to uh, any surface. So when we look back up to these other vases on the bookshelves, yeah, they've all got that museum putty, museum wax, and it's keeping them firmly in place so we don't lose our 2,500-year-old pots during heavy earthquakes. So the house is very safe. The house is earthquake safe. It's fireproof, very important in the state of California. They built this thing to last. And when you think of someone who builds a house. There's a special name for that. Someone who designs and builds massive construction projects. I wonder who was the person that got to design and build Hearst Castle? That's an interesting topic. Oh, thank you, Andrew. That was awesome. We got to see the library. Okay. So who is a person that builds a house, right? That is the question right now. Who built First Castle? Well, we're going to be talking about another famous Californian. Her name is Julia Morgan. Now, Miss Morgan would also use these models. She would build these models and they would get shipped to Hearst, who built the house, uh, models just like this. So he could get an idea of, of, as the client who had hired an architect, someone to build and design his house, he could get an idea of what it was gonna look like before they even started building. 
Now we love Julia Morgan here and uh, she had a lot of challenges, not only building uh, Hearst Castle, but also just within her life. It was quite unusual to have a female architect um, over a hundred years ago. Mike, can you tell us a little bit about Julia Morgan? Well, Julia Morgan was about 47 years old when this began, but she got her civil engineering degree in 1894 at UC Berkeley. And she was the first woman to get her certificate from the Ecole in France in 1902. And that generally is a five to six year program. And she did it in three years. So she's pretty, she's really an amazing individual. And when she was hired in 1919 to start work here with Mr. Hurst, she wasn't allowed to vote yet. So really imagine all the hurdles she had to go through in order to get uh, jobs like such as this. And speaking of jobs throughout her career, she did over 700 projects in about 40 years. And this project, and it went on for 28 years, is job 503. So she did almost 200 other projects while working on this particular one. And one of my favorite things that we know about Julia Morgan is that she is California's first licensed woman architect. So she has an office in San Francisco. She's hiring uh, various female and male architects. They said working in her office was like working in an apprenticeship. She was hiring designers and draftsmen and engineers. She had a team of people to assist her. And prior to that, uh, she was one of, you know, few people, few women who were in the engineering program at UC Berkeley in the 1890s. And she was the first woman to be accepted to that fine arts school in Paris. And it was in Paris that she learned how to build with steel reinforcement and concrete. Uh, and she brought that knowledge back to California. And she was, Mike mentioned the earthquake in San Francisco in 1906. She was in. Uh, she was working, and in in California at that time. So some of her buildings uh, were strong, and they withstood the earthquake, and that's why she chose to build Hearst Castle, the way she did. Now this is project number five hundred three. Correct. And we've kind of said the name who she built it for the the client, uh, Mike. Let's see. So who did she build? this house for and why did he build this house well this the client that julia morgan had was a gentleman by the name of william randolph hurst he was a media mogul uh at one time he had 28 newspapers 14 magazines he had a movie production company called cosmopolitan films today you might be familiar with the magazines good housekeeping and cosmopolitan and they also, the corporation owns a percentage of A&E and a percentage of ESPN. So they're still in that media realm. But Mr. Hearst was 56 when construction began up here. And people asked him why he built up here. And he loved coming up here as a young boy. He wrote his mother one time, he said, I would rather spend a month up here at the ranch is what he called it than anywhere in the world. So he loved this area. He loved coming up here camping. And so he thought it would have been a good idea to build a little something. That's what he told Julia Morgan. He wants to build a little something on the hilltop. It'll take you maybe two or three years and that's it. And it went on for almost three decades, 28 years. And he was never fully finished. He had five sons. And his second son asked him, how far along are you with this? And Mr. Hurst said, I'm about halfway finished with this. Well, this certainly is not just a little something, Mike. It's uh, quite an endeavor, almost three decades. Uh, but if he built such a large house, well, I bet he has to have a pretty fantastic room. Oh yeah. We want to know where did William Randolph Hearst sleep? Ooh. Let's get in there.
Yeah, so here it is, the bedroom of William Randolph Hearst, that famous newspaper media mogul. And this was his bedroom. And when people see the bedroom of William Randolph Hearst, well, it's actually kind of a cozy spot here in the house. It's one of the oldest beds, about 500 years old. It's also one of the oldest ceilings in the house. Check that out above the bed. We think that the ceiling is possibly from the 1300s or the 1400s. So yeah, pretty old. And a lot of his ceilings came here from Spain. So he was bringing Spanish ceilings to his house here in California to decorate almost every room in the house, large and small. But keep in mind, this is just a ranch house. It was kind of his vacation home at first. It's where he was camping out with his family in the 1920s. And he's not even going to be staying uh, on this floor of the house until 1927. That's when he moves into the Gothic suite. That's the name of the third floor suite. The entire third floor of Casa Grande is the Gothic suite. So this was Mr. Hearst's very own private bedroom. Now, do you guys see that little, uh, little photograph over there in the corner? Let's get a closer look at that. And I'll try to move the camera very slowly here. We don't wanna lose the signal here in the house surrounded by all this concrete. Okay, do you see the guy with the beard? He's an interesting character. That's Mr. Hearst's father, that's George Hearst. Senator George Hearst, he was a gold miner and a silver miner. And he was the man that first bought this property back when it was just a ranch. And the ranch is pretty big. Let's see, the house is about 68,000 square feet. But I'm kind of curious, how big is a ranch that belongs to the Hearst family? Because I bet there was a lot of interesting activities going on at that ranch, like like uh, horseback riding, I could imagine, right, Mike and Tracy? Let's check this ranch out. This is the Hearst family ranch out there. So he built his dream home. There we go. He built his dream home over, well, 1,600 feet above sea level. The ocean, the views of the ocean are on the other side. We're looking at the Santa Lucia mountain range right now. We can see Burnett Peak out there. Now, the Hearst family, they owned uh, 250,000 acres at one time. Uh, and it extended beyond the ridge line of the Santa Lucias that you can see. Uh, almost uh, how many miles to the north, Mike? Over 30 miles north of here was his backyard boundary at one time. 250,000 acres. 250,000 acres that they would use to go horseback riding. Hearst loved to horseback ride. He, he loved the Western lifestyle. He even liked country Western music. And when he would bring some of these famous guests because he, he, he's a famous Californian. He's making Hollywood movies. He's inviting a lot of 1920s and 1930s Hollywood movie stars up here. Oftentimes, those movie stars wanted to just swim in the pool and sit by the big fireplaces. But he would encourage everyone to get up and get outdoors. Come see the California landscape that he loved so much. So he would be bringing them horseback riding out on the ranch. So there's the ranch out there and he built, it's all about the view. It was all about the view. So that's why he chose to build uh, near the family campsite on this hilltop. We see one of the cottages, uh, Casa del Monte, House of the Mountain. And it's named for the view of the Santa Lucia's that we just took a peek at. So I mentioned some of the Hollywood guests 
that Mr. Hurst would invite. He also invited up uh, politicians, artists, authors. Remember, he is in the publishing industry after all. And one of, I know this is one of my favorite bedrooms and it was certainly a favorite of a writer from uh, back in the early 1900s. She was invited here quite often being good friends with Hearst. And she would say that staying here was like staying in a jewel case. She stayed in the top floor, the celestial suite. There it is, that jewel box, that jewel case bedroom. That writer was, uh, had a hopper good friends with Mr. Hurst. She had a newspaper column down in Los Angeles. And actually she was a, kind of a notorious gossip columnist in old Hollywood. But when she come to visit the ranch, this is the bedroom that Hedda Hopper would get to stay in. And this room is incredible for many reasons. We're surrounded by sunlight on all sides. Our architect, Julia Morgan, designed this bedroom to catch sunlight at all hours of the day. And another design detail, the gold. There is gold leaf in the plaster. There's gold all over this bedroom. So when Hedda Hopper stayed here, she said she wasn't sure what was more valuable, the views from the three balconies or that gold all around her. Now, what's another unique feature of this bedroom? Well, it's in the bell tower. So we're directly below the bells. The bells ring every day at Hearst Castle at noon time. And if we were standing here at that time, well, we would barely hear them, maybe a slight thud because Julia Morgan also designed water tanks for the house. The water tanks, are actually what separate us uh, from those bells. So that water in the tanks above our, our heads, the water uh, actually serves as a sound dampener, maybe to keep the guests from going deaf here in the celestial bedroom. Now this bedroom is part of a larger suite here on the fourth floor, the celestial suite. And one of the features of suites at Hearst Castle, if you were a guest, you didn't just get a bedroom, you also got a sitting room. And a sitting room is kind of a unique feature. We're gonna show you what the celestial sitting room looked like. At the bottom of these stairs, that's your bathroom right there. Another unique feature of the celestial suite. They had to put the bathrooms on the stairs. That's pretty cool, right? Okay, but here we are in the sitting room. And the sitting room kind of acts as a bridge to connect the two bedrooms. Each bell tower has a separate bedroom and then the sitting room connects the suite. But check out that view. Yes, we're at the top of the house, fourth floor. And you really feel like you're on top of the world like you're gonna be able to see uh, typically the ranch, but sometimes also the ocean. And we have a special treat for you guys at home. We're gonna go outside and see that view right now. So watch your step. I'm gonna be very careful as I walk out onto this balcony. Just take a moment to soak it in. Oh yeah, beautiful day. It's looking clear for the most part, blue skies. There is a little bit of a marine layer hovering above the ocean. That's pretty typical this time of year. But yeah, check it out. Here I am, I'm on the balcony. There's the bells, uh-huh. So if you're staying in the bedroom, the window right here is the suite. And then there's the water tanks. And then there's the bells. Incredible. 
And let's get a nice panoramic shot of the ranch below. Mr. Hurst, he kind of wanted this place to feel like you were in a hilltop village in Europe. Maybe you could picture yourself visiting Italy or Spain. So when you visit Hearst Castle, it's like a miniature vacation to the Mediterranean. But I think I could see my friends down below, Mike and Tracy, I want you to see just how far we are. We're 137 feet high at the top of the house. And then down below me is Mike and Tracy. We'll flip the camera. Okay, they're way down there, waving between the trees. They look almost like ants. And hopefully I'll be able to zoom in on them. Maybe not. There they are. I see them. I spotted them. Yeah. That's funny. I could see you guys. I could also see that little model down there. There's the model. There it is. Hey, why don't we why don't we show you, Andrew? Let's see. You guys All see right. That? Yeah, we're oh, on. Let's yet. see. We're gonna zoom in on you, Andrew. Can you see his hat going side to side? Awesome. I could see that hat waving. This has really been spectacular. Andrew is on the fourth floor of Hearst Castle, Casa Grande, celestial balcony between the two celestial bedrooms and the bell towers. This has been fantastic, Andrew. Thank you so much for showing us through Hearst Castle and learning about the library and the third floor Gothic suites where William Randolph Hearst had his bedroom and some of the guest bedrooms. And Mike, I wanna thank you for showing us this model. It's really been fantastic to be able to understand Hearst Castle in its entirety. Oh, wait, hold on, let's zoom out a little bit. There we go. So understand Hearst Castle in its entirety, learn about the structure, learn about Julia Morgan. It really has been fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Thank you for letting me be a part of it today. Awesome. And uh, all my castle kids, thank you for joining me and, and some of your favorite guides here at Hearst Castle. We hope you have a wonderful day and please join us again tomorrow at 10 a.m with Laura, she's gonna be exercising so you'll get your movement in for Castle Kids Parks PE. See you later.